Hallelujah. Give Jesus a big, 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 big hand clap. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Now thanks be to God, which causeth us always, not sometimes, not other times, but always to triumph. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate our wonderful worship team. Can you give them a good God bless you? Amen. And we're standing here only because you made you made a way you made a way you made a way made a way you just sing it as a prophecy you made a way you made a way and we're standing here only because you made wave your hands to jesus and declare your gratitude for his faithfulness over your life his faithfulness over koinonia his faithfulness over your family father we thank you we lay it to heart to say thank you thank you thank you for the miracles for the signs and the wonders thank you no man can do this except god be with him for your abiding presence we thank you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the name of the lord one of the keys that opens us up to a new dimension is thanksgiving where we become thoughtful enough to say thank you jesus you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you so in my life be glorified be glorified in my life Glorified. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Lord, you get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Father, transform my life tonight by the power of your word. Someone pray. Transform my life by the power of your word. You're about to hear a word that will lift you 
You are about to hear a word that will transform you indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just sensed in my heart before we sit to just speak a word of encouragement to someone. You are here and you are wondering, can God make a table in the wilderness? You are here and you are wondering, how will I attend to the bills and the issues? Just when the door is about to open, the devil can lie to you and say, is this what the faithfulness of God looks like? Let me encourage you by the Spirit. You know, the way the realm of the Spirit works, five minutes to your breakthrough, it will still not look like it. Don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Every time you feel discouraged forget about yourself and focus on him listen I've taught you here that you can fail by yourself but you cannot fail with God alone you can fail for sure but you cannot fail with God bless our hearts tonight oh God in the name of Jesus God bless you please be seated in God's glorious presence always a joy to have us around we bless our global family thank you for connecting with us hallelujah just um two or three announcements very quickly and then we'll get to the word there's so much to do tonight by the grace of god next week sunday 31st will be a miracle service for the month of october please invite everybody around this city let them know that jesus still saves jesus still heals jesus still delivers he's still releasing men from the shackles of darkness make that sacrifice to invite everyone praise the name of the lord so 31st october 5 p.m on the dot we start here and then um finally to reiterate that our graduation ceremony for our Koinonia School of Ministry students again will be on Sunday, November the 14th. November the 14th. Are you celebrating our School of Ministry students? We'll be graduating our School of Ministry students officially November the 14th. Please invite everyone to be part of this great occasion. And um, it's our culture as a ministry to have a number of strategic activities at the end of the year one of them being what we call the workers appreciation dinner this would be the first of its edition here in abuja and i'm glad to let you know that it will be on friday december the 10th it will be our first workers appreciation dinner for abuja it is strictly for workers for those who have labored we it is our way of saying thank you to all who have labored in the workforce to see to it that the work of the kingdom um the work of the kingdom makes progress and so please all heads of department take note convey that message so that we can prepare and have a time of sharing together in the presence of god Tonight's message, I, I want to encourage you to do two things for me. Number one, please get tonight's message across to everyone that you truly love and can find. There are people who are in desperate need to hear the things that you are about to hear tonight. He said, blessed are your ears for they hear, blessed are your eyes for they see. I want you to make it a point of duty to get it across to people, especially for people who are still trusting God to come through for them in the area of finances. You can do well. You may not have the financial resources to give them, 
but you can sow this seed and expect it to grow hallelujah the power to get wealth part two last week we began to discuss the subject of the economic system of the kingdom it was an attempt to help believers understand god's ways of um bringing financial abundance to his people we serve a god who is very whole in his dealings with men he does not only want us to prosper spiritually uh, he wants us to prosper all wise he says speaking by the spirit i wish above all things that thou mightest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth part one we looked at a few things i may just take a minute or two to recap that it is god's will for us to prosper and you must come to terms with this once and for all that god is glorified in our prosperity in fact let's take two or three scriptures before we do the recap and then we'll pick it up there's a lot to do tonight proverbs deuteronomy chapter 8 let's start with deuteronomy deuteronomy chapter 8 we'll start from verse 11 for sake of time deuteronomy chapter 8 someone will shout under the anointing now that is a breakthrough coming for their family I just saw that and the Lord is saying he's bringing an end to captivity for that family that is that is the word of the Lord let it be so even by the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen Deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 11 beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his status which i command thee this day we're reading to 14 then we'll jump to 17 less when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied 14 then thy heart be lifted up that thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth from the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. 17. And thou say in thy heart, my power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. 18 says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto your fathers as it is this day psalms 35 and then we'll read verse 27 psalm 35 27 let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause yea let them say continually let the lord be magnified which had pleasure in the prosperity of joshua selman hallelujah so we began to discuss a few things that it is god's will for us to prosper we identified a few imbalances that when the subject of prosperity is isolated from love and passion for jesus and from kingdom come and the emphasis is just the satisfaction and the gratification of the flesh then that becomes destructive but when the subject of prosperity is incorporated as part of the overall counsel of god the law for jesus and passion for him being exalted above it then it now becomes proper and it now becomes a blessing to all who learn the ways of god as touching prosperity and all who handle that reality and we said there are a few things that we need to know as believers if we want to prosper in the kingdom number one we said that all blessings come from God remember 
and belong to him the idea of stewardship that in this kingdom we are not owners owners are rebels we do not own anything we are only given stewardship and the bible says moreover it is required in stewards first corinthians chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2 verse 2 now it says moreover it is required in stewards that a man for first corinthians 4 i meant to say from verse 1 and 2 it says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful number two all blessings come from god through men to men please don't forget this all blessings come from god through men to men nothing comes from god directly to a man it comes from god through men to men even jesus came from god through a human mary to men are we together salvation came from god through the man jesus to men that means it takes god in partnership with men for the blessings and the resources of heaven to reach you if god says yes and the conduit the man who should be used by god to make that yes a reality in your life if that individual says no that yes will only remain in the realm of the spirit it takes the spirit and the bride to say come when the spirit says yes there must be a bride on earth who will echo yes when god says be blessed there must be a man a vessel who will convey that blessing to you and then number three we said wealth and abundance in this kingdom is not an achievement please listen carefully in as much as there are rules and there are laws to engage for the believer when god blesses and prospers you it is not an achievement it is a trust very fundamental but powerful principles and then we contrasted the idea of wealth from the standpoint of men of god the spiritual laws and then businessmen the natural laws or the physical laws that for a very long time there had been this divide men of god generally would say all it takes to prosper is just obey the spiritual laws and then businessmen would say don't mind the men of god just follow the business laws and you would prosper and we agreed last week that both of them have very correct perspectives but both of them are incomplete there is a place for spiritual laws and there is a place for natural laws in synergy they would produce um, a, a dimension of wealth and prosperity that can be perpetuated hallelujah and we consider the spiritual laws number one being the law of absolute or complete surrender please do not forget the first spiritual law according to our teaching is not tithing is not giving it has nothing to do with money it has everything to do with all of you that when you want to do business with god is more than a money issue the narrative that has been given in the church that when it has to do with prosperity it is all about money may not be a very accurate narrative when you want to prosper god's way it starts with all of you god is not looking for your wallet or your atm he's looking for all of you my son he says give me your heart and let your eyes attend to my ways the law of absolute surrender and then number two the law of the tithe the second spiritual law the law of the tithe a 10 percent of your, the increase of god upon your life please pay attention and then number three is the law of giving the law of seed time and harvest according to genesis 8 and verse 22 that seed time and harvest summer and winter cold and heat day and night shall not cease luke chapter 6 and verse 38 says give anything at all you give it shall be given unto you it says good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give so we know where it will come from every time we give it is through men like we agreed upon through men men will give unto your bosom with the same measure that you give that is the measure that it will return to you and um we spoke about different kinds of giving your worship offering 
prophet's offering, vows, we spoke about um, the seed faith, we spoke about sacrifices, and so on and so forth. And then we dealt with return channels. You have to, please don't forget this, that when you engage this spiritual loss of wealth and abundance, there are return channels. Number one is favor with God and men. Favor is the ability or the, the engracing of God upon a man that will cause other people to participate in your success. Favor with God and with men. Number two, wisdom. And I did tell us that there are two dimensions of wisdom required for wealth and prosperity. Number one is divine direction. Number two is divine strategies. And then number three, the blessing activated upon the life of that individual. Praise the name of the Lord. I did observe also last week we learned that the assignment of the spiritual laws, please pay attention, the assignment of the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance, they are primarily responsible for the arrival of financial resources. When you engage spiritual laws, they will cause that substance and financial resources come to you but just knowing the spiritual laws alone you will not be able to perpetuate wealth because for you to truly walk in kingdom wealth you must know how to attract financial resources you must know how to manage the financial resources you must know how to multiply the financial resources that's where many people stop but there is one more you must know how to preserve the financial resources so you must know how to attract it, you must know how to manage it, you must know how to multiply it, and you must know how to preserve it. There are people who succeeded in attracting it, managing it, multiplying it, and lost everything. So you must know how to attract wealth, manage wealth, multiply your financial resources, and then preserve it. This will not be the only series it is line upon line, precept upon precept. But I want to share with you a few things today that I pray in the name of Jesus that it will add to accelerating your journey to the wealthy place. It will help you to be able to get to a point where you are truly, truly an expression of the blessing of the Lord. And please do not allow anyone manipulate you into believing that you do not need financial resources in your life settle it once and for all that the absence of financial resources in your life will punish you and will impede the quality of your living the advancement of the kingdom and your potential for being a blessing you need financial resources are we together it is not money that destroys men is a heart that is not inclined towards the things of god once your heart is wrong money is like a gun if an armed robber holds that gun, it is dangerous for you. If a military man holds the same gun, it is good for you. The gun does not shoot itself. It assumes the character of the holder. Are you learning now? So if you are a wicked person, money will help strengthen that wickedness. If you are a kind person who loves Jesus and loves people, financial resources will help you. We agreed also, we didn't read the scripture today, but last week we agreed that the rich will always rule over the poor and that the borrower will be a slave to the lender. There is a relationship between wealth and influence. You cannot attain a position of influence when you are poor. Are we together? Say in the name of Jesus, I reject poverty. Say in the name of Jesus, I reject poverty. I reject lack. I reject insufficiency. Amen. So pay attention. Tonight God wants to clear many, many, many things. As always, this is a proper deliverance service. Deliverance through transformation. So open up your heart and let the fire of God's word come and break those gates of brass and even cut those bars of iron in sunder. In Jesus name please don't allow anyone distract you tonight be focused on Jesus and be focused on his word in Jesus name let's define 
financial freedom. I thought it was important to start tonight um, teaching by defining financial independence, as you call it, or financial freedom. For many people, they may not be comfortable using the language rich or the language wealthy because it's been misused by so many people. The idea of rich for many people suggests a life of extravagance because the, the pictures that have been associated with the word rich may not be the kinds of pictures that a kingdom person would want to be associated with. Most times when we use the word rich, when you go online, you would find out that it just suggests lazy people who are not doing anything, wasting their time, wasting their life. And so once people hear the word rich, um, it, they, they feel guilty, especially people who love Jesus. So I like to use the word financial independence because it looks like a more responsible word. Are we together now? What is financial freedom or financial independence? Um, financial, look up please. Just because you have financial resources at your disposal does not mean you are financially independent or financially free. Financial independence has to do with the availability of financial resources plus the time to be blessed by it and to use it for the kingdom plus peace of mind. These three things must coexist for you to be said in the kingdom to be financially free. That means financial freedom has to do with the presence of abundant financial resources plus time. If you have money without time, life cheated you. Are we together? Remember that we said the assignment of money to you is time redemption and efficiency. Please go on our YouTube page, Koinonia Global, and get the full teaching for last week. Listen to it. You can download it, archive it, let it be part of your spiritual resources for your growth. You can help your children, help all who are around you and are under your care. Don't just give people money. Whoever is under your care should learn the ways of the kingdom. Are we together? financial abundance plus time plus the peace of mind there are many many wealthy people who do not have peace of mind they suspect everyone they cannot sleep their their, their health is deteriorated they don't have peace it looks like the way satan grants people wealth in this kingdom or in, you know, the, the, the world system is that the higher you rise financially, the more other aspects of your life are shredded into pieces and destabilized. you find out that that seems to be the narrative with the world system. Very wealthy people, but at the expense of their joy, at the expense of their family, at the expense of their spiritual convictions, at the expense of almost everything. They lose their health, they lose their peace. That many people have committed suicide as millionaires with money stashed in their bank accounts after laboring so much they thought that these monies would fill the void that only Jesus can fill and in the presence of cars and houses estates and you know money flying left right and center they still found out that that void could not be filled with material things and they got into very riotous livings like Solomon you know that's what happened to Solomon theologically speaking it was said that he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes as a falling man he had deviated from the patterns of God and the precepts given to him by his father he archived his repentance and his regret and here's what he had to say vanity upon vanity all is vanity so he's paid that price and made that mistake for us to learn that once you take Jesus out of the equation, frustration is imminent, no matter how great. And you know, again, we live in a social media world and a world where media seems to have such power to paint any narrative they want us to believe. So we see people who are wealthy without Jesus Christ and they seem to look very comfortable. They seem to look very happy. It looks like all their lives are put together. It is not true. It is not true. There is a void that is so large, only the size of Jesus can fill in a man. 
nothing else sustains that ability now for a while the truth is that when money comes for a while you can get very happy and excited and you know you are exploring building estates but at the end of it you will find out that there is only so much you can eat there is only so much you can wear there is only so much you can drive that's why people do all kinds of uh, unbelievable things Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Every other thing can run dry. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty and less worth. Very powerful song. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Hallelujah. This is how we are trained in the kingdom to approach the subject of wealth and abundance. It can be minus Jesus. There is no point in the equation of your attaining wealth that you throw Jesus out. No. Whatever requires that you throw Jesus out to prosper is demonic. Did you hear what I said? Whatever would require that Jesus has to be out of this system for that prosperity to come, run away. You don't need to pray. It is demonic. You can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity and yet your heart is not inclined to those things. Can I tell you, most believers have not even tasted the dimensions of wealth that God has in store for the church. Most of the wealth that we have tasted in the church, believe me, it's only a test of faithfulness. Before Jesus comes, there will be such an avalanche of the blessings of the Lord upon individuals. But the shocking part is they will never be connected to those things. Their hearts and their allegiance remain to Jesus and to Jesus only. If you are like that person, say amen. amen. You must become that person who loves Jesus with all your heart in the midst of the estates, in the midst of the billions, in the midst of the influence, financial rest roundabout, you can sing this song with your children and say, even so, you remain Lord. Even so, you remain King. It is very surprising how many people would give up Jesus in a heartbeat for a million, for a billion, for a contract, give up Jesus for some fame. No. Hallelujah. So this is the definition of financial freedom or independence. The presence of abundant financial resources plus the time. Because you need time to really be blessed from financial resources. You need time to spend it with your children, your family, the kingdom, purpose, and then peace of mind. My highest definition of success is peace. More than progress is peace. You can have progress if you do not have peace, you are poor. I have prayed for you here in Koinonia and even in this series, it is my prayer for you again. That may you never be so poor that all you have is money. May you never be so bankrupt and poor that the only thing that defines prosperity for you is financial resources. That is poverty. I taught you five levels of wealth last week, five levels of prosperity, that the first in order of priority is your spiritual prosperity. Your encounter with Jesus, your spiritual growth, conforming to the fullness of the character of the Christ in experience. Then number two, your mental prosperity, having and sustaining superior belief systems that can be deployed to improve the quality of your life and also your assignment. Number three, bodily prosperity. The prosperity of your body and your health. Number four, financial prosperity. So what we call prosperity is only one aspect. And then number five, which is equally important, is relational prosperity. In this kingdom, you must call five over five to be said you are prosperous. If you have only finance, and you lose Jesus, you lose your mind, you lose your health, you lose relationships, but you have money, you are poor. 
it is when your relationship with Jesus is intact, you sustain superior belief systems, your body is healthy, you have financial resources, you have rich destiny relationships, you are wealthy indeed. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. Very quickly, let's get to work. The physical laws of wealth and abundance. Thank you, Jesus. The physical laws of wealth and abundance. There are so many of them, but for tonight's teaching, I will be discussing four very quickly, and then we'll just tie up um, one very briefly, and we're done. A dimension that most people do not know and understand about wealth we'll just introduce it and then we'll pray the first physical law now we're discussing the physical laws remember i taught you just reduce the volume a bit now listen please i taught you that both the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance and the physical laws of wealth and abundance are all called kingdom laws it is the same power of god that is back of their results is that true that means when you engage spiritual laws the power that makes the laws work is the power of god when you engage the physical laws the power that makes the laws work is still the power of god it's just the dynamics of their operation that is different so do not dichotomize it as if god you go there with the realm of the spirit here common sense or the universe is giving me results there is no universe outside of god there is the Bible says, once have I spoken and twice have you heard that all power belongs to God. So what I'm about to teach you now, the reason why it works is because the power of God is back of it. Are we together? The first physical law that governs wealth and abundance is called the law of mental transformation. Please write it down. The law of mental transformation. You want to access the blessings and the wealth of the kingdom having understood absolute surrender your tithing your giving now you want to learn how to manage to multiply and to preserve wealth the law of mental transformation that your thoughts will eventually translate to your physical reality please pay attention for a long time people in church have not been taught that their belief systems and their thinking has a relationship with their financial levels and also their destinies you hear them you, you hear the church the body of christ talk a lot about mindset but i think we've not been as extensive as we should be in helping believers understand the role that a transformed mind has to play as far as the wealth of a believer is concerned the law of mental transformation proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 let's hurry up there's so much to do it says for as he thinketh in his heart the word heart is usually interchanged for mind for as he thinketh in his heart the bible says so is he it didn't say so he will be it immediately equates your thoughts with your reality are we together now most people who desire to prosper financially speaking would not care about their their mental state and most people feel that all it takes to prosper is capital plus a business idea all it takes is just some money or somebody to help me that is not true many people have tried it again and again and it did not work your thoughts your mental state has a lot to do with your prosperity as it is in your mind so it will manifest in your life that is the truth the realities that are captured in your thoughts and your belief systems will eventually find physical expressions within your life you are your reality is a product of your most dominant thought this is true you have to believe this in genesis chapter 11 we we'll read from verse 1 to 6 Genesis chapter 11 from verse 1 to 6. This was Nimrod Cush. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Uh -huh. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of China. And they dwelt there. And they said to one another, Goto, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. 
and they made brick for stone and slime they had for mortar verse 4 and they said they are speaking to themselves now go to let us build us a city listen carefully and a tower whose top may reach to the heavens the goal let us make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth now theolo theologians hold on please verse 4 theologians still argue as to whether this was a spiritual concept or there was a building physically at least the bible did not tell us this was a parable so it's safe to assume that these people meant it literally are we together so we see nimrod kush and the people proposing to themselves that we are going to build a city and a tower and we want the top to reach the skies the heavens they had not started the building they were only communicating an idea and they agreed with one another verse 5 if you're a christian please read one to read and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded one more time verse 5 hold on the fact that the lord came down meant he saw something real the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded that means it was finished already they had not started physically they were communicating that idea and yet in the realm of the spirit a building was rising god had to come and say who is building the power of thoughts that everything in life is built twice first in your mind and then physically if you ever try to build anything physically that is not yet built in your mind you will lose it believe me when i tell you this everything in this kingdom is built twice first in your mind and then your physical reality are we together now please put that scripture again and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded not the children of men were considering no as they were discussing it their minds were receiving it that womb of the mind was receiving the seed something real was growing it's not satan that came to see it it's not an angel that came to see it god himself do you know this is an interesting scripture because Holy Spirit is not mentioned here. Satan is not mentioned here. The only thing mentioned here are men and thoughts. And yet the word impossible, as far as limitation is concerned, is also used here. Verse 6. Hmm. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they all have one language now from the earth standpoint. And this they begin to do physically, what has finished he said they had built it now they want to do it physically and god himself is speaking he says and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have so the name of that thing that was building in the realm of the spirit is called imagination their minds were architects building their possibilities and yet physically there was no physical building can i tell you this you don't have to move to a physical location to prosper right where you are in that one room you are constrained physically but let your mind start building tomorrow let your mind walk with the word of god and start building the next season the law of mental transformation write this down your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden it will grow any seeds that are planted and watered and it will give you abundant harvest of the same i'll take it again your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden your mind is likened to a garden that is so fertile it will grow any seed the seed are the ideas that you allow failure limitations success victory that soil of your mind the moment it receives seed your mind does not have the ability to on its own reject seeds you just drop it there and it begins to grow drop discouragement it will grow drop limitation it will grow drop faith it will grow drop the victory consciousness it will grow that means you must pay attention to what you drop there or oh, let me put it this way proverbs 4 23 
Let the Bible speak for itself. Proverbs 4.23 Keep your heart. Now you understand. Other versions say, Guard your heart with all diligence. Why? For out of it are the issues of life. Out of that heart, your mind, are the issues of life. Write this down. Your prosperity will be in greater measure, comma, a product of your paradigm and philosophies more than a product of the economy. That your prosperity will be more a product of your philosophy and your paradigm more than the economy. That means it is not truly the economy of your territory that determines your prosperity but your philosophy and your paradigm no matter what changes in the economy if you don't change you will still remain poor no matter what remains the same in the economy if you change everything will change you see where we miss it now when you measure poverty from an economic standpoint you are speaking territorially the gdp and all of that but at an individual level the economy is not the reason why an individual is poor. It is largely your philosophy, your ideas. Are we together? You prosper largely from your paradigm and your philosophies more than the economy. The problem is not the economy. The problem is your ideas, your philosophies, and your paradigm. Write this down. If you attempt to change your life, that means your physical reality, without first changing your mind if you attempt to change your physical reality without first changing your mind if you attempt to change your physical reality without first changing your mind this is what will happen your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back to reflect the level of your thinking your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back to reflect your level of thinking if you attempt to change your physical reality without first changing your mind or your mindset your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back to default and reflect your thinking look up please um, many of us here, we have some of us who are pilots and so on and so forth. In, in aviation, there is what they call the principle of cybernetics. It's, it's, it's an aviation principle. It, it is a, a check and balance system to make sure that as the plane lifts, it remains in its trajectory. Are we together now? That when there is a deviation, say for instance, a plane lifts and is going this way, there is... A degree to which the plane cannot deviate beyond that level the principle of cybernetics will kick up to bring the plane back to its course are we together now that is how your mind works another example is the thermostat the thermostat of an iron as you use it to press your clothes when you put it and set it at a level the moment it gets hot beyond that level that temperature it will off this is how our mindsets are so there is a programming that says you should never have more than 100,000. If for any reason someone blesses you with 1 million, while you are dancing, your mind interprets it as a mistake. Because based on that mindset, it's illegal to be holding that amount. I am saying that your body will start creating behaviors. This is a law that will make you waste that money back to the level where your mindset says now you are proper. This is why you see people, no matter what money comes, they keep recycling back to a particular range. It is not just demons. It is a law of mental transformation. So, you can find out someone who your mindset has pegged along a particular quality of living. You have not evolved to a superior version of yourself by changing your belief systems. According to the law of time and chance, one miracle will happen for you. This is why people win lotteries and win millions of dollars. As they are dancing, their mind is saying, this is a mistake. Your mindset 
has the assignment of making sure your physical reality is consistent with your level of thinking anytime your physical reality is more than your level of thinking your mindset will fight that result until it brings you back the same way if your mindset is higher than your physical reality your mindset will start compelling behaviors that will move you out of that realm to the realm that is consistent with your thinking please brothers and sisters understand what i'm teaching you this is not some scientology this is scripture that means i can start from one room but i pick up my bible i pick materials of men and women and i begin who have these results and i begin to engage with the spirit i am learning the word of god listen carefully i am learning the ways of god from that one room with a cup of gary with a cup of rice a window that is leaking a roof that is leaking but i am in that room i may not go out because i don't have the physical resources to take me out of that realm but i can allow my mind to travel with the word of god to the place where i want to come to physically can i tell you this your mindset is the authorized escort that leads you to where you want to go your mindset has to go to that realm and verify then come and pick your body to that realm please pay attention to what i'm teaching you so if you want to move out of that one realm that one room for instance i'm using one room not not that there's anything particularly wrong but we desire to move to higher levels is that true so assuming you are in in a negative condition you are hungry nobody is helping you no destiny helper no nothing from that one room you are learning the law of honor from that one room you are learning relationships from that one room you are learning scriptures you are listening to a message can i tell you your mindset will start forcing you to leave that room not by looking for rent just pay attention to what i'm telling you hmm. you are in this room now watch this no helper no help from anywhere the holy ghost says you just give me your mindset and let's travel pay attention listen carefully what i am telling you is powerful this is how god brought us here please listen 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 please don't just shout anyhow sit down and listen this 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 night's teaching i'm teaching from the depth of my heart i want you to understand what i'm saying are we together let me tell you what will start happening because the power of god is at the back of that law that whoever gets transformed should not remain at the level that is less than his transformation it is a spiritual law even though it's a physical it, the, the law is physical in manifestation but there is spiritual power that backs it the same power that raises a cripple from the wheelchair in a crusade ground is the same power that is back of that activity so you are in one room somewhere no family members no helper you come from a family where no one has risen don't try to live a fake life we're getting there to destroy and damage this fake living you don't have to fake what can be real are you together now now you are in that one room and you are praying and listening to messages you may not be able to change your cloth nothing physical will change you are still hungry you are still looking for food there are still bills upon you but your mind is only your body that is in that realm as you begin to grow and walk with god let me tell you what will happen the power of god in partnership with your mindset will start creating scenarios that will push you out of that place you must leave that place to a level that becomes consistent with your thinking don't find don't start wasting your time asking where am i going to leave that one to the intelligence of a power that is greater than you the law of mental transformation most times we live in a world that interprets your prosperity based on the physical things you're wearing is that true how expensive is your material what kind of watch are you wearing oh this is five million wow five million that means you are rich can i tell you even if you give somebody a watch and a cloth of five million naira and his mindset is 50,000 activities will happen around his life satan is looking for those kind of people because on legal basis he can now cooperate with the law 
You see how Satan works. Satan does not just have power on his own. His power is based on the loopholes in our obedience. So he will cash in. He becomes a destructive force that makes that law work. He will come and partner with that law to make sure you retrogress down to a point where you now fit your mindset. It's the same thing that happens to children in school. So, a child grows and the father keeps telling him or the mother, you are dull, you are a stupid child, you will not amount to anything, we are poor. Make sure when you see other people, no, you are not part of them. Let me tell you what you are doing. You are programming something in that child. When that child gets to school, the mindset will interpret anything he does correct as a mistake. When that child fails and he brings back a poor result, that result is now consistent with his mindset. What most parents would do, I don't mean to look down on parents and their, their approach to training children, is that in anger for wasting your school fees, you will fight and box and beat that child. Out of fear, he will go back and write one exam and get 60 over 70. His mindset will say, this is wrong. That 60 over 70 is not consistent with the kind of thinking. And sooner or later, he will return back. The real way to grow is to change. This is powerful. The law of mental transformation. The moment you find yourself looking for money, you have missed the law. You will never find money. Money is not missing. Don't look for it. It is attracted by who you are becoming more than what you do. Becoming is greater than doing. Your evolution and your transformation is greater than what you do. Can I tell you this? You will prosper largely because of who you have become more than what you do. But the people that do know their God, it starts with knowledge. Listen carefully. It says they shall be, become, then they shall do exploits. It starts with knowledge, transformation, then action. Most people get it the other way around. So you find many people, Christians, what business can I do to prosper me? What job can I get to prosper me? You are missing it. You can do 30 things, you will get the same result if it's the same mindset doing them. It is not the business that is failing. It's the mindset that is doing the business that is making it fail. Are we together now? That is why the wealthy are not wealthy because of the business that prospered them. The wealthy are wealthy because of the mindset that made the business they are doing to prosper. Every business that you are, you are failing at, someone is succeeding at. The difference is not the business, it's the mindset. When you have a car and you drive that car to a ditch, don't blame the car. The car was supposed to obey every direction you take it to. So if your incompetence as a learner takes, tells the car to go to the left, it will obey you. When you see that car hitting the tree, police does not arrest the car. They arrest you. Because the problem is not the car. The problem is the driver. That driver is your mindset. Are, are you learning now? Please come, Minister Kyle. They just come for a moment. Let me just use you for an example. Watch this. This body you see, everybody look up and learn. This body you see is only an instrument of execution. This body does not have a will of its own. Anything you see the body do that translates to the result of your destiny is only obedient to your mindset. If I take my hand and I slap this man, the hand is innocent. It is the mindset that told the hand to slap. Are we together now? If I take a gun and I go to kill, the gun is innocent. The mindset instructed the body to hold the gun till it kills because it believes it cannot prosper by dignity. So your body is only a slave to your thinking. When a man slaps his wife and beats the wife, there is a mindset that teaches you that if you beat the living daylight out of your wife, she will respect you. Maybe it came from culture. So your body becomes a slave to that thinking. Now, let's assume, God forbid, but let's assume this man is an arm robber. Shoot this arm robber and let him fall to the ground. Let's also assume that there is another man standing here. Come, you sit back at your keyboard, eh? Watch this. Let's assume this man is a pastor. 
Shoot two of them when they fall down. Do you call this an arm robber dead body? Do you call this a pastor dead body? So who was really the pastor? And who was really the arm robber? Not the bodies. They are all called dead bodies. Now watch this. Let's assume this man is an arm robber. There is a mindset making him to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It, this man is a pastor. There is a mindset making him to preach the gospel and to love Jesus Christ. By the time this man gets saved, he can come here and the one's arm robber suddenly changes. His body did not change. His face did not change. His voice did not change. The only thing that changed was his spirit and his mindset. So when you want to change men, what do you really change? So why have you been focusing on changing clothes and changing cars and changing jobs? It looks like the obvious problem, but it is not the right one. You have changed every other thing except the real thing that needs change. Can I tell you, when everybody is wrong, it's proof that the problem is your lens of sight, your mindset. Is someone learning? So when the Holy Spirit comes and wants to build you, he will not give you capital for a business. You see some of those prayers we are praying, is the mercy of God that is making that prayer not to be answered. Because God does not want you to waste money. God, if you can just give me five million in this Abuja, I promise you, you don't even need to come and help me again. You just give me five million and I will use the brain God gave. And you see, in God's mind, all you are saying is, Lord, mercy. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm confused, but I need help. And he comes to you. He gives you a book and he gives you a message. Go and meet somebody who is struggling financially and give him a teaching and say, can you listen to this? He said, no, you are wasting my time. All I need is money. And you are telling him, I want to help you. I shared it last week. This man can remove this beautiful attire he's wearing. Not to insult, we pray that God transforms them. But you go to the outskirts of the city where you meet all these rough boys. Again, you know what is rough about them, right? It is not the body. Always remember this body has always been obedient. It is the mindset that told the body to smoke. It is the mindset that told the body to sleep under a bridge. It is the mindset that told the body to go and look for where there is something to smoke. The body is innocent. Remove this same cloth and give those boys to wear. In one week, their mindset will tell on the cloth. This cloth is clean. It did not iron itself. The body did not make it happen. It's the mindset that told the body to be sure that it is neatly dressed. So all of the confusion around our lives, we blame our bodies, we blame all of this. It is our refusal to be transformed. This is not just for your finance, it's for your life. We've dealt with the subject of mindsets. We come from different cultures. We come from different backgrounds. We've gone through different levels of whatever it is. Again, if this man has never experienced favor in his life, let's assume that he came, respectfully speaking, from a polygamous family and he went through all kinds of things. He failed. He did 10 years to finish primary school. Eight years to finish secondary school. Another 10 years to finish university. By the time he comes for koinonia and I say favor, his mindset rejects that prayer because that has not been captured in his reality. If I say diligence to work hard, he will say amen because that's what he knows. If I say favor, he wants to say amen, but his mind is saying, what is favor? It will scan the archive of your destiny and say, there's no such thing as that. So don't receive it. Are we together? Can I tell you, if you are yet to get a job, thank God, because you have the time to change quickly. So that by the time that job comes, is the renewed, is the enlightened version of you that is admitted there. Most people complain and waste time and sit from morning till night blaming God, blaming parents, blaming wealthy people and blaming serious people for their conditions. This is only the first law. Now this is where I have a problem with the imbalanced teaching that just give and your life will change. It's not true. You, you are seeing it now, right? Because there are many people who as they are putting their hands to give, the realm of the spirit is ready to bring you the favor. But the level of mental transformation that can take that favor and translate it to a blessing is not there. So spiritual blessings keep coming in a bag that is full of holes. Listen to me. 
it was not oil and a vessel that was equal to profit it was oil and plenty vessels when the prophet diagnosed her situation he said the problem is not the oil the oil will always assume the shape of the vessel carrying it if the vessel is small the oil will look small he said madam go and borrow vessel enlarge your capacity that anointing it is not your tight that is not working it is not your giving that is not working it is the vessel through which the answer is coming even if rain falls from morning till night and it's only a cup you have outside if we are to use the rain based on the size of your cup we'll say it only drizzled whereas it was a, an avalanche it's just your cup that made it look like it is not raining are we blessed when i found this principle i began to rejoice I made up my mind that I won't fake anything. Brothers and sisters, drink your gari with honor. Don't rush the season in your life now because you will miss it. You will look for it and not find it again. It will take a telescope to look back and say, where am I coming from? Transformation. That is lasting wealth that does not fail. That's why you see wealthy people, even when they lose money or lose whatever it is, it doesn't really bother them because the moment they lose money, their mindset kicks in and says it's a mistake. You shouldn't be poor. And the Holy Spirit will start working with that mind to find a way of bringing you back. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Yes. Look up, please. If Baba Deboe walks into this place right now and says, I am hungry. Look up. How many of you say, how is that my business? There are restaurants, there's one in Jabi, there's one in Wuse. Is that how you respond? Some of you will say, thank you, Jesus. I have been praying for you. will run, leave this koinonia as it is now and run and go somewhere and make sure you get the meal and come and kneel down and say, please eat it in my presence and bless me. Do you know why? Look at this. Because his level of transformation does not allow that condition to exist in his life. Can I tell you, there is a level of transformation that if you get to it, it is only millionaires that have that kind of mindset. And if you have that mindset and there is nothing in your hand, the law of God's justice will force you to have the resources that match that mindset. Oh, goodness, my God. Help your people believe that I'm not just here wasting my time. That means if you have the mindset of a millionaire now and you are in one room, the law, the power that backs this law will interpret it as a lie. God will raise a destiny helper, a business, anything to shift you. So what you do is not really the problem. It's who you are. Are we together? Can I be honest with you? I want to say something now. When I started ministry, I used to go and preach. And sometimes now I, I'm, I'm, I have never preached for money. It has never been about giving. I love Jesus with all my heart. And for as long as I live, he becomes my motivation. Are we together? But when I started preaching, I remember when I would go and minister somewhere. And sometimes, it's when I climb my bike going back home. They will now stand as if they are bribing me and bring out 2A. And just count maybe 1,000 or 500 as a man of God. May the Lord honor you. Thank you for coming for this meeting. I never felt bad because it was only my body that was in that realm. My mind was already years ahead of my body. And I knew my mind would pick my body to a place where I'll be blessed. I never told anybody I am growing. The moment I focus on growing, everything, including the way they treated me as I traveled, began to grow. Can I tell you this? Everything is waiting for you to grow, to grow too. Now, I'm going to demonstrate something that many of you have watched me do it can can i have a few people gentlemen sorry for inconveniencing you please come let's have like um i need at least six people one two three one two three four five six three of you stand here please facing one another no three stand here three stand here everybody watch and don't let the devil deceive you to believe you know what i'm saying just pay attention to what I'm saying because this is how the devil cheats people in church. Now, watch this. Please go back, guys. This 
is what I want you to learn. Please, if you can lift your right hand, anything you can find, whether your watch, just lift anything up that represents your results. Watch this. These are all the things that you want. Now he's lifting money. Now he's lifting all of this. These are different dimensions in life. Watch this. The way God programmed life is that you don't... All these things they are lifting, lift it, guys, are needed in your destiny. But to start looking for them one by one is a burden God did not give you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Most of us, when God tells you, you need influence, you need relationship, you need a media ministry, you need finances, you need to travel abroad. How do you start looking for these things one by one? How old will you become before you get them? Let me show you how it works. You don't look for money. You never find it. Every realm and every level in your life has the possibilities attached to it to come. If this is level one, there is something that should come to level one. If this is level two, there is something that should come to level two. You don't bring them by getting them. You bring them by growing. Let me show you how the law works. For every step I take, come close to. Watch this. I'm in one room, poor and broke. From a family where nobody has risen. But I'm listening to Joshua Selman's message. And he's preaching. And I'm listening to it. Lord, I know that you are changing me. Watch this. I don't even know that these things are coming closer to me. Because I can't see them. I'm still in the one room. Let me show you how the law works. God has called you to be an entrepreneur. He has called you to be a man of God. Now, I'm listening to Miles Munro's materials. I'm listening to all of these things. Oh, there is something called the law of honor. That honor is the key to access. I've grown. Watch this. Are you seeing that now? Everything you are looking for is also looking for you. But it is not looking for this version of you. Please go back, guys. Is someone learning now? There is a version of you that wants to get this. A version of you that wants to sit in business class. You sit with business class with only 100 naira in your pocket. You are not yet there. So you go back. You know you have entered a realm because everything around you grows to support that realm. You cannot buy a jeep and be looking for one gallon of fuel to fuel it. You are not there. Are you seeing now? If it is by growth you get to a point where you can buy a jeep then other supporting areas would have grown to make fueling a car not an issue this is the mistake and the fallacy of a fake life you came to church sit down and learn watch this now because for some of you i'm showing you a graphic picture of what god is doing with you now you are seated in that house and you are saying lord will you ever lift me and then you keep learning and then you keep learning and then you keep learning one day somebody just calls you and says where are you is the law of time and chance happening remember the power of god is supervising that law you're a businessman someone now says can you help me sell one land um and you sell it and make three hundred thousand. it is small compared to the kingdom financier billionaire you are to be but it is a test it is only god showing you that this thing is working now you keep engaging these laws a time will come where even you cannot push them away the moment you are growing even if you try to push them they won't go you push money away it will not go because your growth has brought it to your life are you getting what i'm saying now now watch this by the time you stand this way everything has surrounded you the media interview you have always looked for you forgot about it and focus on growth the jeep that will not make people sleep now you have cars you don't even know what to do with it because they were designed to follow growth not just desire believers if you pay attention to what i'm saying you will look for me one day and say apostle thank you let's go back This is where you are, my dear brother. Nobody knows you, yet you are a man of God that God has said you will go to the nations. 
there is temptation to live a fake life and get into premature manifestation and god says don't worry oh god but i am i am 30 years old and i don't have a car god says just focus on growing just focus on growing and while you are growing one day god will position your destiny helpers in a conference and bring you there to preach and then because you have allowed yourself to be transformed by the time you preach you see this man holding money he will carry what will be somebody's one year salary and give to you just when you want to rejoice god says ah we're still in the school of the spirit this is not all you need this is just to encourage you that it is working let's go back to class now many people out of pride just stand and start bragging and says no can i be honest with you you can go back and everything also will go back this is the mystery behind balloon success now watch this i can use willpower and i can manipulate my way to hold this whereas i have not grown the laws of god's justice system will interpret this as a lie i will lose this thing no matter how careful i am life must take me back to the real place that befits my mindset can i be honest with you my dear people hear me this is where living a fake life if you eat tomorrow's bread today you will be hungry tomorrow if you wear tomorrow's cloth today if all you have is a trouser of 500 naira iron it with honor it is only your body wearing it your mind is already in a boutique shopping for your next level of life walking with the holy spirit we live in a world today where people are proud uh, they feel ashamed of process if you come and meet me in a one room with my bible and my candle and i'm praying and reading a book usually i'll be afraid and ashamed and so i will lie and tell my friend can you borrow me your house so that i will give a narrative that i'm making it no the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that people can rise and can i tell you this let men laugh while you rise there will be the witnesses the day you rise they will be the ones who tell people, no, 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 minus this person. We knew him. We saw him when he started. Make up your mind that there is no living a fake life anywhere. Don't borrow any money to go and buy clothes and buy this and buy a car. That debt is killing you. Your mindset is cooperating with Satan to bring you back. Punishing yourself in cycles. Simply because you want to give a narrative that you're successful. You can find rest God's way. One last time. Let me act your journey right now. For some of you, you have gotten to level one. Some of you are already millionaires, but that's not all God wants to do. Some of you are billionaires, but that's not all God wants to do. Can I tell you this? Until you get to a point where you can give to the kingdom without inconvenience, you are not yet there. So as I kneel to pray, as I come for koinonia every week, let me tell you what is happening to you. Week one, week two, you don't look like it. Week three, all that falling, you are falling under the anointing, you stand up and feel your wivon fell out. Don't worry, don't worry. This is what is happening to you. I know you are laughing, but take seriously what I'm saying. You are listening to the word of God. Others are sleeping, you are awake praying. You are studying materials. All because you want to build your mind. A day will come, you will see people's prayer requests coming to you. You didn't remember praying for them, but you fulfilled the Lord that brought them. They will come so close to you, you will drive them and they will not go away. A day will come, you say, God, these cars are enough. Just when you are saying it, a call will come and somebody will say, God told me. And God says, I can't stop. You are obeying the law. I must back it. Please do not think what you are hearing is some entertainment from a preacher. No. I fear God too much to come and waste your precious time here. Alagbara. You are the mighty God. Hey, Lato Bichu. You are the glorious God. Allah Bara. You are the mighty God. Hey, Lato Bichu. You are the glorious God. 
please go back one last time gentlemen watch this this was what God told me many years ago son do not worry about these things focus on my principles that what you could not eat then you will eat it tomorrow the first crusade that we went to they were less than maybe about the size of our worship team here can you imagine praying and fasting for weeks as if you would die only to get to the crusade ground we were in debt the same ladies who were in the welfare were in the worship team they climbed trees to plot firewood for us to cook before they went to sing but it was only our bodies that were there powerful crusade and i said lord someday nations and kings will come transformation in partnership with the word of god will take us there and today to him be the glory and this is only one step out of the cave can i tell you this do not feel embarrassed by the inconveniences that you may see right now stop faking it stop roaming around getting angry and feeling this person should have helped me the fact that they cannot remember you means you are not walking by this law there is a level that when you get to your helpers must remember you so you see that it was only the body of joseph that was in that prison joseph knew i'm sure joseph was comforting them and they were saying joseph what is the basis of your confidence you are a prisoner like us he said no it is only my body that is with you when i get up i will make sure that i favor you and in one night no here is the fallacy of saying people just came out of nowhere no they rose to match where their minds have always been just because you did not see their training process does not mean they were not trained you might be a politician here please hear me you are starting as a local government chairman but your level of kingdom and mental transformation is the mindset of a senator a mindset of a president a mindset of an ambassador can i tell you the truth it will be impossible for you to remain in that position i don't care what party you are the force that backs this law is so powerful that no institution on earth sustains the power to stop an individual who fulfills this law this is true so the lord is telling you right now why is it that in spite of the fact that i'm getting money i'm not doing anything you are focused on getting not growing the first law i'm teaching you this night i can't believe we've spent so much time on just one law next time you rise and someone says you are just lucky tell the person please sit down i have a few things to tell you out of a heart of love and comfort it is not luck it is understanding are we blessed one last time never forget this teach your children teach everyone you know you are a ceo gather the people in your company and tell them stop complaining about the money you are receiving the money you are receiving is not all i am paying it is what your mindset instructed me to pay you the day you rise the instruction will change let this be your destiny in the name of jesus that by growth by growth everything that you are looking for today by growth when it comes by growth you are not afraid because everything will grow together are we blessed gentlemen god bless you i really appreciate you let's celebrate them let's give them a big has someone learned something today packaging without mental upgrade will only lead you to frustration you will give a narrative you will not have the transformation to defend are we together yes. you cannot claim you're a millionaire and then mama will ask you for ten thousand and you are talking stories you are not there simple by faith you are there in the spirit you are there but physically if you are not there 
be patient and walk with the dignity of kingdom integrity focus more on becoming than doing you will do but let it come after you have become your physical environment will gradually and eventually reflect the true state of your mindset your physical environment will gradually and eventually reflect the true state of your mindset i don't have the time and i think i've taught it here how the mind is renewed you must have access to superior word-based ideas and information the first way to upgrade your mind is access to superior word-based information teachings like this that come to challenge status quo and to build you number two repetition of those ideas until conviction is established hearing once will not bring transformation you must hear again and again can i tell you there are teachings and materials i was sharing with the school of ministry student i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not there are materials i have listened to more than six thousand times one material the goal is not for information the goal is for transportation into my mind until it becomes true number two are we still here so the first law is the law of mental transformation the second law that commands wealth and abundance in this kingdom physical law is called the law of value please write it down the law of value your value is a measure of your skill your gift your abilities whether acquired or inherent your value is a measure please write it down your value is a measure of your skill your gift your ability whether acquired or inherent proverbs 18 and verse 16 your value is a measure of your usefulness to the marketplace usefulness not to destiny it is a measure of your usefulness to the marketplace the marketplace is a mystery it's not just talking about a market like your shop or mall or whatever it is a marketplace is the name given to the platform where demand and supply meet it's called the marketplace so your value is a representation of your usefulness to the marketplace write this down your value is also a measure of your ability to solve problems and provide solutions don't put a full stop just write please be patient you are learning something for your destiny your value is a measure of your ability to solve problems and provide solutions that are needed and useful please underline needed and underline useful within the context of a civilization let me take it again your value is a measure of your ability to solve problems and provide solutions that are needed and useful solutions that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization that means your value must be needed and useful to prosper you just because it is value does not mean you will prosper that value must be needed and it must be useful you have that down write this please your value decide who pursues you and who rewards you your value decides who pursues you and who rewards you this is very important because you want to live a rewarded life and now we are learning that in addition to your mental transformation your value a measure of your problem solving ability decides who pursues you and who rewards you we get paid and rewarded for bringing value to the marketplace we get paid and we get rewarded for bringing value to the marketplace africa wake up nigeria wake up 
these superstitious ideas we have about wealth to believe that all we need to do is just to drop seeds as important as it is and our lives will magically transform into transgenerational wealth those teachings may have come from well-meaning people but it is not accurate based on the authority of scripture and the wisdom we glean from those who have that result value we get paid and rewarded for bringing value to the marketplace write this down you must discover and develop problem solving skills and abilities if you want to prosper you must discover and develop problem solving skills and abilities if you want to prosper superstitiously hoping that you will become a millionaire that you will be blessed just like that may not get the job done you must discover and you must develop problem solving skills and abilities thank you jesus write this down please become a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored become a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored all of these sentiments that come using tribe religion gender age they only become issues when your value is not needed and useful and when you have not invested in yourself to discover and develop the moment you discover and develop your value under normal circumstances you will veto the sentiments of gender sentiments of religion sentiments of whatever it is most people who are willing to pay you are desperate for results they don't really care whether it's a male hand or a female hand that provides that result the moment you are able to solve that problem can i tell you this look up please if a billionaire's daughter is about to die he does not care whether it is a muslim's hand that operates her to heal her whether it is a christian's hand whether it is a 30 year old hand or a 60 year old hand let the hand just have the ability to make sure that person is healed and the rewards will come there are we together now someone who wants to design an estate and is ready to invest billions in it he does not care whether the person who does the architecture is a female is a male is a, a, a whatever it is is young or old the moment you have the competence and the value to be able to deliver that results this is why you find out that in places like europe and china you have young boys who some of them have not even gotten to teenage and yet they are doing all kinds of things around the world because rewards answer to value rewards don't answer necessarily to age rewards don't answer necessarily to gender they answer to value whoever is solving the problem is the one who will receive the rewards are you learning this is very powerful the law of value make up your mind that you will never be ignored in your world not by trying to look for a name for yourself be too valuable to be ignored there are 7.6 billion people across this world and growing but there are certain people around the globe who are called authorities across several areas and several sectors is that true there are associations literally that determine who will come to what dimension and what state because of the level of value that they have to provide no matter where you are around the world if you must attain that level of result it will not be by ignoring them may you become that kind of person oil is valuable to nigeria and africa and to the world go to the places where they mine oil in this nation and you watch the rigor and the activities that go on there when you see oil coming is a is a dark smelly paste that is slippery it's not something you should desire and yet nobody runs away from it 
because we have learned by experience that as dark and as smelly as it is it is what literally controls the wealth of nations are we blessed There is no market I know that does not have patronage. Whether the market is in the bush, whether the market is close to the road, once it is the market day, you will see everybody finding their way to go there. Value. There is something to be bought there and there is something to be sold there. Watch this. There are people who go to meet herbalists and occultists for power or position or whatever it is and do you know that people can get up from here and go anywhere around the world and even several places in this nation you can get to a place and a herbalist a rickety looking man who is sitting down in a smelly hut he will tell you turn back and you will turn back keep your jeep there and walk on barefoot look at all the sacrifices that you, a man can go through with joy why because there is an assurance at the back of that sacrifice that you will get some political position or maybe your company will receive some contract everybody say value it is my prayer for you that you will be so valuable that whilst you are sitting down many people's prayer requests will be looking for you in genesis chapter 41 let's hurry up in genesis chapter 41 We'll read from verse 14, then we'll jump to 33. This was the story of, jo of Joseph and Pharaoh. Remember, Joseph interpreted the dream in Egypt. And Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, the Bible says, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. 33. Having interpreted the dream, he now began to use his value to prefer an economic solution to save the day. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise. It was a diplomatic way of saying, Pharaoh, I dare you, go around Egypt and check if you will find somebody like me. Now, let Pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt next verse let's hurry up let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up a fifth part of the land in the seven plenteous years uh-huh and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the land of Pharaoh and let them heap food in the cities we're reading and that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. As a result, Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this? May that be your testimony. That everywhere in your office, in your place of work, in your field of endeavor, that they will look around, not from a competitive standpoint, but from a standpoint of value, they can say, can we find such a one as this? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. What rewards that follow value? And Pharaoh said to Joseph, for as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. It says, only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over the land of Egypt. No interview, no consultation, no thinking about it, no come back tomorrow. The lifting power of value. Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Next verse. He made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee to someone who 24 hours ago was a prisoner but valuable. 
let me prophesy over someone here in the name of Jesus Christ for some of you before this week runs out on account of the value and the investment you have been making in yourself the Pharaoh that will send for you the Cyrus that will send for you I command that they must send for you and lift you in the name of Jesus Christ please sit down every blessed man is looking for valuable people nobody wants a liability and a nuisance in his place of work in his place of business stop bringing the issue of sentiments and say i have a brother somewhere he does not want to give me a job are you valuable there are many people who complain and say you are not giving us this contract will you do the job if given value is an enhancer of favor when you are valuable it is easy for favor to find expression in your life number three for sake of time we have to rush the third law physical law that is responsible for wealth and abundance is called the law of productivity the law of productivity productivity is the quality or ability to create make or enhance products and services productivity is the quality or ability to create make or enhance products and services the ability to create make or enhance products and services another definition productivity is the ability listen carefully this is my definition now the ability to refine and develop your value and then turn it into products and services that are needed and useful and then to serve it with excellence to a targeted consumer base i will take it again that productivity is the ability to refine and develop your value your value just like crude oil once it remains crude it is only potential it cannot bring you much you will need to refine it you will need to develop your value and then turn it into products and services that are needed and useful and then to serve it with excellence to a targeted consumer base hallelujah are we learning Please look up. If I use a fetcher and I look for any well around this environment and I fetch water, watch this now, and I use a white leather bag and I pour that water inside and I bring it to you as a dignitary, I say, This is my gift for you. Are you going to accept it? If I tell you to pay 100 naira, say for instance, for that, will you pay for it? But the same water that you are rejecting and getting angry and, and you feel insulted for being, for, for being served that water in a leather bag, someone will process that water. It's the same water from the same source sometimes and package it in a very beautiful bottle and now give it to you. And sometimes in a hotel, you can pay as much as 2,000 naira with joy. What are you paying for? It is not the water. You are also paying for the refinement are we together now listen to me as powerful as value is your value may be sufficient for commendation but maybe not for reward you have to turn from value to productivity many gifted people in this nation remain bankrupt because they are not productive they are valuable i can sing but nobody will reward you because it is not yet refined. I can preach, but nobody will place a demand upon your grace because you've not packaged your value. I can cook. I can bake. I'm a good speaker. I have a very good argument for government. All of that is just stories. Value. As important as it is, you must contend for productivity. Please shout it. Say productivity. That means you must turn your value by development and refining 
into products and services that are needed and useful then you can serve them with excellence to a targeted consumer base are we together now yes a great friend and brother pastor nathaniel bassi one time he was sharing his story how that not not too many years before now he was in this same country and would sing with a good voice with grace and yet not be rewarded and honored the way he's doing now the difference was that he turned value or he moved past the step of value to productivity now you want to invite him for instance you must be willing to go through all of the logistics that you go through with joy why because you are not only bringing a man who is valuable you are bringing a man who is productive could this be why people keep commending you ah, madam your food is so nice and yet you are poor the day you make up your mind to now turn that value right from your kitchen now you begin to cook and find a way of packaging it and take it to somebody who has an influence over so many people and say this is just a seed for you to taste and the man says who did this you say you how long have you been doing this i've done this all my life okay i need 100 pieces of this by tomorrow you see that now god now positions your destiny helpers and in one month you are already cooking for kings it is only when you serve kings that you receive the reward of kings never stop developing yourself until you find out you are in the palace the palace is where the gold is the palace is where treasures are kept if you are serving gatekeepers and serving people thank god for that but keep evolving the day you see the king you can know that you have found rest you cannot receive the rewards of kings when you are outside the palace serve your way through excellence develop yourself whether you are in ministry some of you here are great men and women of god but you have not come to a point where you give yourself the frame that makes your value productive are we together the law of productivity when i found this it changed my life i made up my mind that i will invest in every aspect of my life and make sure that I continue to package my value and to serve it with excellence. Being valuable is not enough. Your value must be refined, your value must be packaged, and your value must be served with excellence to command a reward. Being valuable is not enough. Your value must be refined, your value must be packaged, your value must be served with excellence. To command a reward therefore tonight I encourage you to reject and fight mediocrity fight mediocrity like you fight Satan fight it out of your life it is the sponsor of a mediocre life is a sponsor of a defeated life fight mediocrity productivity requires exposure you cannot be productive until you are exposed Exposure means that you broaden your horizon beyond your current scope of sight. You have to be able to expand your mind and your thinking. Positive exposure is very, very needed if you will be productive. Productivity also requires creativity and innovation. You have to be creative, you have to be innovative. You have to be creative, you have to be innovative. write this down i thought to add this very quickly before we skip to the next area competence still about productivity competence and excellence are magnets attracting people resources and opportunities to your life competence and excellence are magnets attracting people attracting resources and attracting opportunities to your life competence and excellence are magnets please look up why do you go to a place like transcorp or any of the top hotels within this city and pay so much for a room or pay so much for a meal and sometimes the exact thing you are eating there 
are we together i was teaching the school of ministry students and we laughed over it that you can go to a hotel and just for a tiny cup of coffee you can pay three thousand whereas a shop just outside that hotel you can buy the coffee the spoon and the cup you will use for less than one thousand are we together because you are not just buying coffee you are buying the atmosphere too you are buying the excellence you are buying the competence you are buying the, the ambience the sense of honor everything is factored to make what would be 200 naira to become 3000 make up your mind to be productive make up your mind to be competent make up your mind to be excellent let's hurry up number four the law of increase so the first is the law of mental transformation the second is the law of value the third is the law of productivity the fourth is the law of increase in matthew chapter 25 just write it for reference when we read from verse 14 down to 30 matthew 25 the parable of the talents the bible says that the kingdom of god is like a man who went to his servants and delivered goods to them and then the bible says he gave unto one five talents two and one please pay attention and that in giving them he left them and the one who had five talents increased it to ten the one who had two talents doubled it and increased it to four the one who had a single talent went and buried it and when the man would come back to demand accountability he said what did you do with what i gave you and for the one with five received the reward the one with two received the reward and then the one with only one he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow and so i thought instead of um doing this and that and that let me go and bury it here is your one talent he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant it is not enough to have financial resources you must know how to build and to increase that is why many of us continue to receive the blessings of the Lord through your job through a business and yet we do not increase because we do not understand that increase is a law increase is not just something you do in business there is a law that brings increase second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10 blessed be the name of the Lord second Corinthians 9 and verse 10 let me teach you something powerful now this is how money works this is a principle that helps you to distribute your financial resources for growth and for multiplication. Please pay attention. The principle that I'm about to share with you right now is what will help you distribute financial resources to ensure growth and multiplication. Here's what the Bible says. Now, he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food. And what should he do? he should multiply your seed sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness four very important words here number one bread number two seed number three multiply number four increase in one verse that god can minister seed to the sower please say after me seed then say bread one more time say seed don't be tired say bread. bread that means for every when God blesses you with financial resources in every increase and every blessing that God gives you whether it comes as a salary whether it comes as profits from a business whether it comes as a one-off show of favor in it there is always seed and there is bread everybody say seed and say bread, bread. now watch this the assignment of bread is to satisfy your current need the assignment of seed is to make sure you are not hungry tomorrow i repeat the assignment of bread is to satisfy your current need the assignment of seed is to make sure tomorrow there will still be food if you sow your bread you wasted it if you eat your seed you are going to lose god is that benevolent that out of every money he sends your way there is bread for today and there is seed for tomorrow 
when they cried the nation of israel cried for hunger god did not send seeds what did he send bread because they needed to eat it immediately now here is what most people do and i want to observe this respectfully speaking most of our elderly ones people within the ages of say 80 down to say maybe 70 60 that generation focused so much on seed and they forgot bread that means they focused they were so futuristic about securing the destiny of children and children's children that they forgot today there are many people is until they die you see how much they are worth now the children discover that this man who died had properties that he bought around but while he was alive there were times in that house they did not have food to eat he did not know that out of all the monies that god brings there is bread and there is seed he carried both bread and seed and sowed it into the future and now people were hungry and he himself did not benefit from the blessing of the lord upon his life and then you value one or two plots of land or one or two hectares of land and you find out that he left a total of 100 million and yet that same house children could not go to good schools that same house nobody had the opportunity to advance that was a mistake now our generation of young people our mistake is that we do not understand seed what we understand is bread are you getting it now so let tomorrow go places we eat both bread and seed today and then you find out someone who is supposed to be blessed today becomes a pauper and a beggar tomorrow overnight because they were bread conscious and not seed conscious are you learning something tonight that there was a generation that focused on seed and ignored bread you would find people who never built a house by themselves yet they had their assets and everything was in millions nobody benefited from their money not the kingdom not them not their children until they died and then you have people who come to claim the inheritance who have no basis coming to that family because they were focused on the future it is only when you are alive that you can get to the future god is that benevolent to bring bread for today and seed for tomorrow but when you have a generation that also as a revenge mission i won't suffer my father he has done his own he has gone me i will enjoy my life now let me tell you this let me tell you this remember this is a deliverance service let me tell you this if you think like that you will be naked tomorrow it is painful to taste of the wealth and the prosperity of of this kingdom and then tomorrow you go back and have a worse tomorrow than your yesterday the path of the just should always be as a shining light are we together so everything god gives you when god gives you money for some of you from this month when you collect salary or when you collect some profit whatever it is or just someone just decides to bless you as you hold that money i want you to remember the law of increase increase is not just something you do through business it is a law that what you are holding in your hand there is seed and there is bread there is a part of it that is for tomorrow and there is a part of it that is for today you must be honest enough to be fair on yourself with the bread that is for today but you must also be disciplined enough to allow the one that should get into tomorrow to get tomorrow let me tell you this if you were to meet your accountant and ask him please i need a total of every money that has entered my bank account from when i opened it you will repent for one year for the kind of wastage you will sit down and say i can't imagine that hundred million has passed through this account one billion has passed through this account but no house no car no education where did it go to i will tell you you ate both seed and bread is god speaking to us don't say apostle all that i earn is just fifty thousand. what will it do every seed is small there is no seed that is a tree there is no seed that is as big as my hand
God gave you favor January this year an uncle just blessed you and gave you one million what did you do you forgot God you forgot your future you forgot everything and you just said look I've suffered let me just let me let me do justice to myself now don't feel bad I'm not condemning you can I tell you this please you must obtain grace from God tonight to be disciplined enough to fight and reject the temptation anybody who advises you whether as friends and an association oh it's my birthday I have to spend it the way who said that why don't you take the time now and let your seed prepare a befitting birthday for you are we together there are people you see I'm, I don't mean to insult you but there are people who all they have in their account home and abroad is 500,000 yet you will see them in a hotel where billionaires are the billionaires have assets that pay for their liabilities so they can spend hundred thousand in a moment somebody who owns an airline can be there having a business discussion they can spend one million right there because there are people queuing up to return the money at the airport they are not stupid people and then you find someone in their midst who are we together God is speaking to us the house of God is a place of wisdom can I tell you this listen please look up have the courage to look at friends look at everybody to say look I like this idea but I may not have the budget for this for now I will note it and when I am ready they will look at you and are you saying that NMPC job you are working in don't fall our hand don't do this can I tell you summon the courage to let them know you have mental prosperity mental prosperity there are people who would have been house owners in this city if only they knew how to eat bread and sow seeds is that true I don't mean to insult you and please forgive me if you think I do but there are people who have spent 10 years 20 years 30 years in Abuja here they don't have one land as at the time land was 500,000 in some places 50,000 they watched it go from 1 million to 5 million to 10 million to 20 million there are people today as at the time they got their houses the surrounding lands were less than maybe 1 million they watch people come and today the only thing they have is a little maybe maybe half plot and they had the money how about people who can borrow 10 million or 20 million or 40 million to buy a jeep and be paying it with salary and then somebody now comes to hit that jeep and they tell you the shock absorber alone will buy you kekena pepper are you seeing the mistakes that we're making please take seriously what I'm saying we keep making very wrong decisions because we do not know that for everything God trusts you with in that 10,000 there is bread and there is seed if you don't respect the seed in the 10,000 1 million will never come is someone learning for some of us by reason of this message you will go and open an account like I teach the students and refuse to collect the ATM from the bank let that be the account where your seed apostle what do I do with it just make sure it is there first don't worry about what to do with it many of us have had the privilege do you know there are people in this nation who have had the honor and the privilege of meeting others who said look my house is valued at 30 million but I'm, tr I'm relocating to America if you have 5 million take and they could not take an offer because all the seeds God said keep because of these days of favor you ignored it and you were eating it and now a house of 30 million that will be given to you 5 million but because you ate both bread and seed can I tell you this don't regret the mistakes you made yesterday start now make up your mind and discipline yourself to start now for everything God gives you every financial resource God gives you there is bread 
and there is seed. Are we together? Bread is for today. Seed is for tomorrow. Practice savings. Practice savings. When God blesses you, take out your tithe. Believe in tithing. 10% and then take out your seed. Many people recommend 20% of whatever you have so that you save it. I told the school of ministry students, you can save 20% of your income if you have time. What is pursuing you is what determines how you run. Is that true? If a chicken is pursuing you, you can run carelessly, but if a lion is pursuing you, you will run with the energy of an athlete. So if you know you have made mistakes and now at, at 40, at age 40, you are saving 20% of your income, you will not go far. When you are talking to a child of 13, 14 years, you can tell him to start saving 10, 20%. But I'm telling you, if you really, 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 really want to make progress financially, you must practice the law of increase and then learn to save. Save. There are two basic reasons why we save. Number one, for emergencies. Number two, for investment. Write it down. In another series, we'll take our time to deal with it. There are only two reasons why we save money. Number one, for emergencies. Number two, for investments. By the way, you may want to write this down. The only way money multiplies is through investments. There is no other way. The only way money multiplies is through investments. What is investment? Acquisition of assets. That is for another series. Wealthy people never take on any liability and expenditure until they can show the assets that will pay for it. They spend their lives acquiring the assets that pay for their liabilities. So when you meet a wealthy man and you say, Daddy, I want to celebrate birthday, he will not just carry one million and give you. He will check from all his investments which one will pay for that liability. If there is no investment that pays for it, he will be patient. That is the economy of the wealthy. The only way money grows, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me, investments. In another series, we may not have time to teach that now, but it is important for you to know that the law of increase is very important. You need to experience increase, not just the arrival of financial resources. Almost everybody here with decent planning, no matter what level, you can put something together while you are praying. Lord, open doors of favor for me, but then you are practicing your savings and you are putting something down god can now open a door for you and then you have abundant financial resources every time you spend everything you have know that your future is crying every time you spend everything you have you just punished your future practice frugality the absence of wastage justifiable expenditures be frugal especially where you are rising there are people who can afford to be you know uh, quite um, luxurious with their lives because they have paid the price to build systems that can replenish where you are starting and where you are rising you must be frugal can i be honest with you you know that you are really making progress financially when people underestimate your real worth because you reduce yourself many levels below your true worth so that you can grow people should not be able to look at you and estimate and say you are 10 million you are 1 billion you are 500 million you are 200 million you are 500 000. no you should leave many layers below your true worth as a sacrifice to truly get to the wealthy place that is the philosophy of wealthy people a man may make may be a millionaire and yet you still see him living a modest life being frugal the day you see him acting as if he's a millionaire he has become a billionaire since so if you join him just because you made one or two million i hope you know a millionaire is not who, one who has one million or two million no a millionaire is one who has relationships that can maintain that level 
intelligence that can maintain that level systems and structures that can replenish at that level and then financial resources that is at least 10 million if not you are not a millionaire so you see all this philosophy of 1 million or 1.5 and we say we are millionaires then we say we have made it and then we crash back to 100,000 again as a punishment for not learning we start again and we repeat the same mistake life is a brutal teacher it will teach you as many times as you need to learn painful teaching tonight but a profitable one are we learning the law of increase for the sake of this series the next time we're going to look at the law of relation and then we'll look at the law of investments and you'll be learning that investment is not just about money like prosperity there are five levels of investment spiritual investment mental investment investment in your body and financial investment and then we'll be learning how to store wealth it's one thing to have so much but you must know how to store it the bible says strong men retain wealth there are people who have risen to one billion billions and 10 years after they crash back to the point that they cannot bring two hundred thousand. it's a terrible life that's not god's design for us it is the reason why in africa we do not perpetuate wealth because it starts and ends with us you start from zero naira you rise to one billion by the end of your life you're minus one your children start they balance up that to zero and start again it's not supposed to be so the bible says a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children not his children you must be two generations ahead that's how you measure your success a quick recap number one the law of mental transformation number two the law of value are we still here number three the law of productivity number four the law of increase now we're wrapping up please pay attention this is a very sensitive moment now i'll have to end here for this series but i want to end by showing you that in this kingdom we have an advantage there is the prophetic dimension of wealth you may not learn this in a business seminar but it is true there is an advantage that we have in this kingdom we are not helpless there is the prophetic dimension of wealth we're about to pray this is very important in second chronicles chapter 20 when you read from verse 20 to 25 the story of jehoshaphat and judah when they were attacked by three nations that came in unity to fight them second chronicles chapter 20 we we'll begin to read from verse 20 please let's hurry up for time the bible says and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of tekoa pay attention now and as they went forth jehoshaphat stood and said hear me o judah koinonia god is speaking and ye inhabitants of jerusalem believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established believe his prophets so shall ye prosper not just believe the business you are doing not just believe that your mind is transformed there is an advantage that i build in my economy for the saints in light are we together by the time you read down to 25 the people began to kill themselves and then all they came and they saw dead bodies there and the bible says jehoshaphat and the people they could not take the spoils away why will people carry gold to war because god wanted to use a prophetic dimension and give it to his people believers hear me the prophetic dimension of wealth is not a license for laziness it's a system of advantage incorporated in god's economy to prove to creation that there is a god that backs the saints are we together hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 very quickly and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt egypt is a place of captivity and by a prophet was he preserved 
in second kings chapter 7 from verse 1 just write it down you don't have we are not we don't have the time to read it elisha said this was a famine in fam, in samaria i'm showing you how territories were restored through the prophetic hear ye the word of the lord thus saith the lord tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of samaria this is prophecy when there was famine the economists were still there when there was famine the business people were still there can i tell you there are times when your fishing will not bring fish it is not that your net is not good it is not that your skill is not good it is that there are powers that can stop the fish from coming there at that time you don't just need business acumen you need a prophetic advantage are we together in luke chapter 5 luke chapter 5 let's read that very quickly from verse 1 and it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of god he stood by the lake of gennesaret uh-huh and he saw two sheep standing by the lake but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets what were they washing so they were valuable they had boats they had nets they were productive are we together now oh there are times they were responsible and transformed enough to go for fishing there are times that mental transformation can be limited there are times that your value can be limited there are times that your skill you are as productive as you can but because we live in a realm that is spiritual you will need jesus and he entered into one of the ships which was simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of them now when he had left speaking he said to simon i show you the prophetic dimension of wealth launch out into the deep i don't care what it is that you have done i know your economic principles say it is until december it says in in two months you cannot be blessed but this one i respect your net i respect your boat i respect your transformation but i am jesus launch out into the deep and let down your net for a drought hallelujah here's what simon said master we have toiled all night we are not lazy we are valuable we are productive we've been doing this for a long time but the pandemic just came and all our skills and the company the company is still in place but there is no profit he said nevertheless oh there is a nevertheless in a believer's equation are you hearing me in a believer's equation it is not one plus one that is two economically speaking one plus one is two but there are times demons can change that two into zero so you are doing one plus one but your answer is not becoming two and jesus says step out now this is not economy this is the prophetic if you don't understand this dimension your wisdom will be limited this is where the fallacy of people ignoring god comes in ignoring the prophetic ministry after 10 years of excelling they will plunge down sign satan and simon answering said master we have toiled all night we have taken nothing nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net what happened verse 6 when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break they had never caught this kind of miracle let me tell you what the prophetic can do i believe in investments where you can be patient for 10 20 years and god will lift you i believe you can buy build houses and then be paying the rent break even after three five years but believe us we are not alone in this journey there is the prophetic dimension that can push a man overnight i repeat it is not a license for laziness that is why i taught you these other laws before introducing this dimension the mistake with we men of god in the body of christ is that we ignore all of this and we just tell people there is a prophetic dimension and there is so as they receive they become lazy they refuse to contend for transformation they refuse to contend to be valuable they refuse to be productive they refuse to master relationships they refuse to invest why because they know that at any time i can come 
But hear me, God did not bring you tonight just to learn economics. This is the house of God. Mysteriously, mysteriously, this house sustains the power of God to change lives and to transform even people's finances by the power of the prophetic. I am a product of these principles alongside the prophetic ministry. When the prophetic ministry is administered out of disalignment to scripture, it will destroy, it will produce imbalances. But when the prophetic ministry is administered within the boundary of scripture and then balanced by these principles, it can work wonders in a man's life. There is something called prepared blessings in this kingdom where Joseph can be sitting down and God can make Pharaoh. Joseph, you can interpret dreams, but your value cannot make Pharaoh call you. It takes an agency from heaven to make Pharaoh want to see you. I took my time to pray over the things that I'm about to declare. Let me wrap up tonight before we pray. Let me define for you what is the power to get wealth based on everything I've said. What then is the power to get wealth? Never forget this definition. Two definitions I will give you. Number one, the power to get wealth is an engracing by the Holy Spirit upon an individual, upon an organization, and engracing by the Holy Spirit upon an individual, upon an organization that number one, attracts to the life of that individual people, opportunities, and resources. We're, we're defining the power to get wealth. And engracing from the Holy Spirit that can come upon the life of an individual. And it works like a magnet. Attracting to your life people, the ministry of men, attracting to your life opportunities attracting to your life resources number two the power to get wealth is an empowerment upon an individual or an organization to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men leading to all kinds of rewards principally financial rewards an empowerment upon an individual an empowerment upon a family an empowerment upon a business an empowerment upon an organization a ministry to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men comma leading to all kinds of results honor influence principally financial rewards this is the power to get wealth so when the bible says god gives men the power to get wealth he places a grace upon their lives that can attract to their space people resources and opportunities and then he engraces the people to provide extraordinary solutions that will lead to all kinds of results, rewards, even financial rewards. I have an assignment as we wrap up this series. It's our first financial series officially in this ministry. It won't be the last. There are many other dimensions to cover. By the grace of God, I'm committed to communicating the whole counsel of God. But hear me. Truly, I tell you, there is a prophetic dimension of wealth. I have worked in keeping with the laws of transformation. I have worked in keeping with the laws of value, the laws of productivity, and all the other laws. But many instances in my life, I've had the honor and the privilege to receive a prophetic push. And I can tell you the wonder that this did in my life. We're wrapping up. This is a very sensitive moment. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 41, you want the prophetic to work for you, you have to know how the prophetic works. It says, he that receives a prophet 
in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward and he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward I don't have the time to begin to tell you different experiences in my life and in this ministry where God granted the grace to provoke the prophetic and when the prophetic came it took us to different levels of the blessings of the Lord can I tell you believers I know that many people have suffered manipulation from men of God imbalances from men of God but I love you too much and I fear God too much to not teach you the truth these truths you have learned the spiritual laws and part of this physical laws are irrefutable but the prophetic advantage comes into the life of a believer listen carefully to be able to lift you and to bless you there are two keys that provoke the operation of the prophetic please write it down and never forget the prophetic does not just work arbitrarily there are two keys that activate the operation of the prophetic number one honor honor to God and honor to the prophetic vessel that will speak over your life you cannot dishonor God and dishonor his mouthpiece and prosper by the anointing that comes from that mouthpiece now sometimes men of God use this sadly to bully people into you know just trying to manipulate people for respect that may be wrong but I'm telling you when you dishonor God and you dishonor his anointed you will never truly be able to receive number two the second way you provoke the prophetic to work for you is through the power of sacrifice Psalm 50 verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice you can't imagine how I've struggled to come and teach this prophetic dimension but because I cannot my mind I will not even be able to sleep knowing that I did not open you up to this dimension behind the mysterious prosperity you see of men and women whether in the kingdom or even in the secular accelerated wealth that just came into people there was a prophetic push and it came at the instance of honor and at the instance of a sacrifice I'm going to be speaking over your life I'm going to be declaring over you but let me tell you this for the first time in koinonia I'm going to be challenging you tonight to stand in partnership with the Lord and agree with God what sacrifice that you are going to give with understanding to break out of any financial circle of limitation and retrogression years of, of poverty and yokes of darkness listen if you don't believe what I'm teaching and what I'm saying please do not do it just listen to what I'm telling you you are absolutely at liberty to ignore what I'm telling you but if it is the kingdom and it is prosperity you desire whether you are following online or listening to me there are companies there are families there are individuals like Peter you have tried all night the truth is that you have taken out time to transform yourself you have bought books you've gone to school you've had seminars there are others who have you are valuable others you are productive you've done your best but there are times when your net may not catch any fish there are times when your boat can take you to the river but the net will not catch any fish at that point you need the prophetic when the pandemic came people lost money people lost businesses hear me if I stand here as a man of God to lie to you to manipulate you may a curse be upon me forever for the rest of my life I fear God too much and God has shown us too much mercy to stand here 
and face you inside outside all the overflows and the thousands and potentially millions of people across the globe following i fear god too much to do that but also i love you too much to look beyond my reputation and teach you the truth there are times that i have taken certain steps of faith i cannot begin to tell you the sacrifices that i've laid down at the altar that has made god to vow certain vows in my life it was in portacot in one of the occasions i went for a convention i was outside just like koinonia and the man of god came and preached i sat down didn't have much there was nothing and he challenged people just like this and i believed him i went back home that night god is my witness i gathered my whole bag and everything my rechargeable i zipped everything i prayed in tongues laying my hands on it for three hours non-stop by the next day i dragged that bag that was everything i had i stayed outside when people were dropping seeds and dropping whatever others were giving landed properties other people were giving whatever it is i just stood back there and the holy spirit now said i should wait when everybody had finished giving he said i can walk to the altar i dragged my bag and i knew this was isaac i went and i dragged that bag like a madman people were looking at me there is a way you really want to get out of certain circles Please help those under the anointing there there is a way please hear me i'm speaking to you by the spirit some of you your being here tonight is the prayer and fasting of mama for 10 years i did not go to school but oh god can you raise somebody from this family that in my lifetime let us taste of the blessing of the lord before i go to my grave god wants to give you an opportunity i'm not calling you out i'm not calling anybody out but can i tell you this i'm about to pray for you the truth is that the prophetic truly truly when it has to do with ending circles it will take a sacrifice when god wanted many sons he took his own son as a sacrifice and buried him in the ground he that weepeth bearing precious seeds shall doubtless return rejoicing bringing in the sheaves can i tell you this I'm not supposed to say it, but I will tell you, while I was preparing, the moment the Lord put it in my heart to teach on this prophetic dimension, God gave me an instruction myself on what to sow because I have to believe in this message too. If I don't believe it, I'm a hypocrite. I don't leave off what people do and bring. I leave off my own obedience. When God told me what to sow, I had to say, wow. And I did it immediately before coming. And even at that, I made sure that I packaged my own seed to come and that one is between me and God. This one now is apostle preaching to everybody, including me. So don't think it's something that we're just talking. I believe in what I'm doing. Can I tell you this? For some of you, you have been praying and saying, Lord, how long? I am tired of this circle. For others, you need to go and contend for transformation. Others, you need to work on your value others you need to work on productivity others you need to work on all the spiritual laws but in addition to that god is giving us an opportunity tonight to end circles when i drop that seed and i return back i remember the holy ghost spoke to me outside and said from this day you have entered wealth i didn't understand what that meant listen carefully god is my witness by the next day 6 10 in the morning someone calls me shaking under the anointing who is this are you so 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 and so i said yes he said send me your account number i just thought immediately these are all these scammers who just want he said no 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 i woke up this morning with an instruction that i should do a transfer to your account i said what is this i had a release in my spirit i took the risk I was surprised to see what the person sent i said what in the world is this god now connected me to somebody and the rest is history god began to lift and to show himself faithful somebody who loved me so much you will think that i i don't know if i cough that man will buy me a pharmacy not a drug 
I started watching these things happen. Only a fool leaves what works. I held on to that truth and I said, this must work. I remember one time in this ministry when we started, the Lord gave an instruction to, do, to empty the entire account. I stand by the God of heaven and I tell you the truth. That's an economic risk. There are times when under divine instruction, both bread and seed can go. You can cast your bread upon the waters. And after many days, he says, you will find it. In one week, seven days, what God did for this ministry, this dear vision he has so honored, till Jesus comes, we will not recover from it. I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. Many of you are already practitioners of these truths. Some of you are practitioners of it, but by manipulation. Some of you are doing it, but it, it, there was no light and revelation. Can I tell you this? I'm about to pray for you. Our time is up. You are going to agree with God right now. As a family, as a business, as an individual. Lord, I believe you and I believe your servant. What seed? It is, I'm not, there's no amount we are not mentioning anything. I'm not calling anybody out. Everyone should participate, your children, whoever. If it's a seed that you want to give here, ushers, I don't know how, they, how you do it. Maybe the account details will be given. If it's something you want to copy the account details and so, but brothers and sisters, I want to pray for you. The prophetic to bring people out of seasons of, of, of shame and reproach, it is with sacrifice. A sacrifice is not an offering. No. If a sacrifice does not touch you, it will not touch God. I want you to stand. Oh, my lifting has come. Oh, my lifting has come. Oh, my rising has come oh, 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 oh my rise the lord gave me an instruction many years ago to carry a seed which was a sacrifice and take to canaan land and go and drop it before god's servant it was a huge sacrifice I got up like a madman, got the next available flight, went there, did everything I did. I came out with joy knowing that my life would change. And the Holy Spirit asked me to come out of the vehicle. He said I should lay my hands on the ground there in Canaan land. And he says from today you have entered the overflow anointing. I can show you different points in my life. A day came in my life when the Lord spoke to me and said, I will begin to raise people who will be personal financiers to your life, not ministry. I will begin to raise kings and nobles from across the globe whose assignment is to make sure you are comfortable serving the purposes of God. I believed him. A sacrifice is powerful. A sacrifice can change an individual's life. Listen to me. I'm going to give you room to pray in one minute. You know, some of you are in debt right now. Into the millions and into the billions, corporate debt, personal debt. Some of you have lost money in investments. There is no way you can get it back. Some of you, there are all kinds of problems. You have court cases right now. This kind goeth not, but by sacrifice. I'm going to give you two minutes our time is gone to cry before the God of heaven and to tell him Lord I have come to the end of this season of begging and borrowing and crying please take it serious please in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God no distraction everywhere overflows please pray 
some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears God is giving you an opportunity to change your life pray let it be from the depth of your heart your life is about to change oh my lifting has come oh, 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 oh my lifting has come oh, oh, oh my season has come oh, 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 oh. my season i like you to declare lord what my father could not do what my mother could not do this embargo of poverty and hardship upon my life upon my ministry upon my family it's time to bring it to an end it's time to bring it to an end it's time to bring it to an end man of god pray you may be anointed but you need to engage the principle that brings supply for your life and for ministry otherwise you will suffer as if god did not call you businessman listen to me there are times your boat and your fish may not be able to catch you will need the master's voice but before the master's voice you will need to give your boat as an act of faith don't fight what god puts in your heart for some of you this may be the first time in your christian experience you will be making a real sacrifice prompted by a man of god for others that is the principle that kept lifting you to where you are in the name of jesus now please listen to me please hear me ushers i like you to just i don't know how you do it but position yourselves around just help them please my god i sense such a strong anointing here i'm about to break certain things now if there is a seed here and you have it your sacrifice whatever a check you're writing we can have the account numbers pr projected please make sure no scammer or nobody defrauds you we are people of integrity whatever seed i want to pray for you when god spoke with joy i gave mine and i still made sure i said no i cannot come and be praying for god's people and then not hold a sacrifice to myself i believe in this thing that i teach with all my heart this is how he has brought us thus far there is no magic to it I want to pray for you there is a grace that will come upon you today please hear me many of you you will marvel and wonder at what God begins to do there is an anointing that will come upon businesses upon individuals I'm telling you this by the God who called me that at the instance of this sacrifice and those who are following from any nation the US Europe here in Nigeria there are pastors who are watching god is telling you to do this for your ministry there are business people who are watching god has been speaking to you for a long time now is the time i'm not asking anybody to come out if you're doing a transfer that is the account there alas if you have your seed lift it if it's a transfer do it if you're making a commitment please don't be emotional and don't make emotional decisions no but i can tell you by god this is an instruction that god gave me otherwise i would not do this since koinonia started in abuja this is the first time that a call is being made by the spirit of god you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed you will never be the same you've touched his grace
please keep standing i'm going to pray i'm going to bow my knees to the god of my covenant listen to me if you have never believed a man of god in your life please i want you to believe don't waste your time please no movement around i want you to believe i want to pray for you the vision that brought me to ministry was a vision of a generation crying and said there's no food and there's no water and this i said who is the cause and they said you are the one i wanted to run and help them but i was afraid because there were people who were chasing me and a gray gray bearded man that i know now to be the holy spirit held my hand and he said let us go brothers and sisters i know what it means to be in insufficiency don't think this is just a preacher's talk at whatever level god has helped you there is more believe me when i tell you there is more it will look like arrogance to begin to tell you the faithfulness of god i just leave that as as let jesus be glorified but i want to pray for you i want you to believe and shout a resounding amen whether you are standing or falling i want you to believe it with all your heart father don't kneel you can stand i will do the kneeling i kneel and i bow before you by this apostolic and prophetic grace Every force sitting on anyone's financial destiny right now in the name of Jesus by the power that raised Christ from the dead let that force be dislodged now be dislodged now be dislodged now master we have toiled all night let me speak to someone here let let the seasons of toiling walking like an elephant eating like an ant let it come to end in your life now let it come to end in your life now hear me everyone here who is in debt whether personal debt or business debt i prophesy by the god of heaven between now and the next three months by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic come out of that debt now come out of that debt now every business here that has refused to grow has refused to rise hear ye the word of the lord between now and the end of 2021 be 10 times better than you are hear me there are many of us here it's not like you are lacking food to eat but you keep recycling the same financial level recycling you can't break out of it some of you have been on building projects for close to 10 years to finish it and move your family is not there by the power of the prophetic i push you to the next level of your destiny i push you to the next level of your finances
Hear me. I tell you, fire is falling. There are families here that love the Lord with all their hearts, but nobody has risen financially in that family for whatever reason. If you belong to that family right now, I'm speaking to you because the power of God is coming upon you. I decree and declare anyone here who is part of any family where the circle is just poverty lack and hardship i declare may that cause be broken now may that cause be broken now every ministry here that is struggling financially following online you are a man of god your church your ministry is struggling financially up today and down tomorrow in the name of jesus christ come out of that shame and reproach now i want to pray for you the lord is ministering to me that there are people it's not like you are poor but all your resources are hanging everywhere you keep watching resources that are supposed to have come but it does not come wherever it is in the name of jesus i decree and declare i command those resources to come to you now come to you now come to you now hear me there are some of you you were part of the lifting of many people but they forgot you that is the reason why you are where you are it's not that you are lazy you've been part of many people's rising but now they've left you where you are in the name of jesus i pray the destiny helper assigned to wipe your tears hold your hands and lift you wherever they are this week i command them to appear before your destiny appear before your destiny all those trusting God for jobs trusting God to start businesses trusting God for any value adding structure in the name of Jesus I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead beginning from this week let there be testimonies And anyone sitting on your glory your financial glory I overturn I overturn I overturn I overturn I overturn I overturn until you sit on your rightful place hear me there are many of you as you go to sleep tonight God will open up to you visions and he will tell you what to do believe me as you go to bed god will show you what to do yeah. hear me there are some of you here because of the urgency of the situation in your life a fish does not carry coin but when there is need to pay tax god can make even a fish to bring coin i pray for you from the most unexpected means may the resources to take away shame from your life may it appear in the name of jesus now hear me i speak over every sacrifice many of you are making profound sacrifices only god knows what you are doing individuals businesses ministries couple children young old organizations but i pray for you by the power that raised christ from the dead the same way fire came upon the sacrifice of elijah in the name of jesus may fire rest on your sacrifice hear me for some of you what you sowed is for the next level of your promotion 
and I really mean what I'm saying. For some of you, what you sowed is for the next level of your political destiny. Some of you, what you sowed is for the next level of your destiny. Whatever has died in your hand, hear the word of the Lord. Let it come back to life now. Hear me. If you have never experienced an individual calling you to say, I want to help you, I release that mantle on you now. 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 Inside, outside, online. Receive that grace right now. Please hear me hear me i am not praying for you for someone to just come and help you once i'm praying for someone who will build a system around your life <laughs> hallelujah please hear me if there is anyone who has victimized you financially either based on tribal sentiments based on religion based on political affiliation or whatever it is right now i lose those chains of you go forward 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 i want you to watch the marvelous testimonies of strange financial miracles you are going to be hearing in the name of jesus christ can i be honest with you for some of you you will be sitting in your home someone will bring the key to a house and say take i speak this by the unction of heaven for some of you will be sitting and someone will bring a car and say god instructed me to give you hear me for some of you someone will come and meet you and say god said i should raise your children till university Now hear this, the final prayer. There is an anointing that comes upon a man that can attract opportunities, that can attract people, that can attract resources. I taught you last week, if you want to pick nails from the ground here, you don't pick them one by one. You pass a magnet around them and it will pick everything. Some of you, that's what you are about to become right now. Hear me? Some of you, your helpers are already in Koinonia. They are in this place right now. Now therefore, as I have received from the fathers of faith, this is a relay. This grace was passed. It is not something we invented. As I have, rele have, as I have received from the fathers and by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic, this grace that mysteriously attracts resources, attracts men, attracts opportunity. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, Koinonia, take that grace now. Let that grace come on your head now. Let that grace come on your business now. Take that grace now. Take that mantle now. Be blessed. Be blessed! Be blessed! And hear me, any power that fights your prosperity from today, in the name of Jesus, that power goes down before your face. And any man who says over his dead body, for this prophetic word to come to pass may the ground open and swallow them may the ground open and swallow them every yoke every enchantment every activity of witchcraft negative patterns i break it now in the name of jesus christ 
go and return with testimonies in the name of Jesus give Jesus praise give Jesus praise it's a new season hallelujah now please be patient I know our time is up you have your offering here or you have your, your sacrifice please let me have one um, usher so that I can drop this if you are to drop let's minimize movement you can drop it with the ushers if it's an, a transfer you are making I want to simply make the altar call and we're done so we'll do this very quickly hallelujah I assure you that your life will never be the same there are people here even though we're teaching on a financial series remember we said the first level of prosperity please minimize movement let's honor the altar call the first level of prosperity is your spiritual prosperity whilst you heard me teach the lord began to speak to you that you have not made your relationship right with jesus or you are saying apostle truly i love jesus but my obsession for money and all of these things have distracted me and i'm not serious spiritually but i want to make it right right now whether you are in this auditorium or in the overflow do not leave this place without giving jesus a chance to your life I'm going to count one to five. I want you to run and come and stand here. Everyone up the balcony around. Don't wait for anyone to come to be the first. You be the first. Come and stand before Jesus. This is an opportunity. Celebrate them. They are coming. I will count one to five. And afterwards, we are going to pray. One. Quickly. Koinonia, celebrate them. Please, ushers, clear the way for them. If they are coming for the altar call. Come to Jesus. God bless you. Come. Come. Come 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 to jesus i'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it when it's all about you it's all about you are you coming run to jesus three it's all about you it's all about you it's all about you jesus thank you for coming every one of you you came to church to encounter jesus you're coming please run please run i'm about to lead them to pray run quickly so that you catch up god bless you god bless you god bless you now all of you please lift your right hand high above your head jesus is the one you are speaking to say after me lord jesus one more time say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification tonight I obtain forgiveness of my sin I obtain the gift of eternal life from you I decree and I declare that Jesus is my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones you have brought them to yourself i pray that the grace to keep them let that grace be released upon you i declare your sins forgiven i declare that a new life is yours in christ jesus the grace to walk in victory is yours too in jesus name I commend you to the ministry of the word and I commend you to the ministry of the spirit. May you be established and grounded in righteousness. In Jesus name I pray. Amen and amen. I want you to please move to my right which is your left. There's a gentleman waving the placard. Please follow them very quickly. Let's celebrate them as they go. The counselors will meet with you for a few minutes and then you will be back. Please help mama. Someone help our mother praise the name of the Lord just to be to remind you that you can get this teaching and the
the one for last week on our YouTube page. By the way, please make sure you follow all our social media platforms, Koinonia Global, there's Koinonia Abuja, and every other arm of expression. Please do well to connect, but you can get the teachings on Koinonia Global this night and then tomorrow. Take out time to listen to it. Listen to it with your family members and make sure that it blesses you. And then do not forget that next week is our miracle service for the month of October. Please rise up on your feet. I decree and declare that your week beginning is blessed. This will be a week full of testimonies for you. You will see the mighty hand of God at work in your life in the name of Jesus. By next week, many of you will return with tearsome testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. And now together, let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, let it rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and see you next week.